Warning, this video gets very nerdy. What's up my friends? Welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff. So nice of you to join me for this one. By popular demand, this is my guide to using zebras in the different Sony picture profiles. It's gonna be a longer video, but don't worry, I've added timestamps for all of the modes you can check to find the one you want down there, or just sit back and enjoy at a leisurely pace. It's gonna be good and I hope you find it helpful. If you don't already know, I now have a Patreon page for this channel. It's a completely non-profit thing where any funds from Patreon, I buy gear, I review them, and then I gift them away to you guys. This video, for example, took me a long time to put together, so if you find it helpful at all, if it helps you get the shot, if it makes your workflow better in any way, if it has a positive impact on you, consider supporting this channel. It's just a really elegant way to improve my content and you get the added bonus of being able to potentially win some awesome gear. Let's get in with it. I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time and the thing that really kicked my butt into gear was the recent video I put out about my frustration and I think shared Sony users' frustration with using the Sony exposure meter in the, on the rear screen of your camera. It was a fun video to film and of course you should check it out. I will link it up here and in the description box below. But in that video, I wanted to offer you a really good alternative to that exposure meter. So firstly, we have histogram, which I would argue is not the best option, particularly when filming in log, because it, essentially you're just eyeballing your footage. And that, of course, just leaves us with zebras. I didn't have time to go into zebras in depth in that video, so I asked you. I've had thoughts of making a guide of how to use zebras in different filming modes on the Sony cameras. If that's of interest, let me know and I'll see what I can do in the comments. And overwhelmingly, the response was, Yes, Harv, definitely make that sh so here it is. Diving into the menu and I've customised the left wheel button to toggle zebras on and off. The zebra settings are just a press of the function button away. The presets have a range from 70% up to 100 plus percent. So whatever you set it to, you'll see zebras above that point. However, the two settings I'm more interested in are standard plus range and lower limit, which can be found in the two custom banks at the bottom. There are other videos out there that tell you about these two modes, but they fail to mention how to use it within your workflow, so that's what I want to cover in this video. Standard plus range, as you may have guessed, gives you the ability to set your zebras anywhere from 0 to 109%, but then add a range of up to 10%. So what does this mean? Say you set your zebras to 50% with a range of 8%, this means you'll only see zebras between 42, aka 8% lower, and 58%, aka 8% above or below 50%. This is extremely cool, and we're gonna make good use of this later on. Lower limit, on the other hand, simply gives us a slightly lower minimum than the presets offer, plus the option to change in 1% increments. The presets go down to 70%, lower limit lets you go down to 50%. Now the way I see it, there are infinite ways you can use zebras to expose your footage, but the two I want to focus on are using zebras to protect your highlights, and then using zebras to correctly expose skin tones. Setting zebras to protect your highlights is super easy. All you need to do is look up the maximum output of the gamma that you're using, aka the point at which you, you get clipped highlights that you just can't recover, and then match the zebra percentage using lower limit. For example, the maximum output of Cine 1, the brightest point is 109%. In theory, if we set our zebras to 109%, you can film and it'll be really obvious if your highlights are clipping. Now, Sony tells us what most of these outputs are on their website, but not all of them for some reason. I don't know why, for whatever reason, they've missed out Cine 3, Cine 4, and s Cinetone. But don't worry, Harv's got your back. I worked out all the missing ones and I'll pop all of them on screen right here for you now. You've got all of your Cine gammas, you've got s Cinetone, you've got all of your log, gammas and then all of the HLG options. I'll also paste these into the description box below so you can always copy and paste them for future reference. You are welcome. So applying this technique to a real world example and ignoring the fact that this is slightly out of focus. You know, I checked focus before I hit record and then just before I did, my camera decided that the most interesting thing in this scene was this twig and it just goes to show that autofocus is great until it's not. Anyway, you can still see in this scene, 
I have just let it overexpose. All of the sky and a large proportion of the water are clipped. They are at 109% and we've lost all detail in those areas. So then I applied zebras using lower limit at 109% and adjusted my exposure and this was the result. And this has done a really nice job. All we've got in terms of highlights is just a few, I suppose you'd call them specular highlights, just twinkling away in the water. So in this case, shooting a very high contrast scene, this technique worked really well. Just to look at one more example, and this is shot in S-Log3. The clipping point of S-Log3 is 94%. And of course, in this example, I've let it way overexpose and we've lost a ton of detail once again. And just to note, what you're seeing right now is with a lookup table applied. And then with our zebras set to lower limit of 94%, I adjusted the exposure so I couldn't see any zebras whatsoever. And the result was this, which I really like. Again, all we've got is just some specular highlights on the water, but when I looked on the waveform, even these are not clipping, and we've retained all the detail from the sky. Admittedly, conditions were quite tough on this day. It's a pretty muggy, very hazy looking day. Moving on to skin tones, and I've found that the standard plus range mode to be really amazing for this because you can set a target range to aim for for your exposure. I should just say at this point that these are techniques that they're not right or wrong, they're just things that have worked for me personally, so by all means, you know, you do you. One question when looking at skin tones is how should each side of your subject's face be exposed? In common lighting setups like, I mean, the one I've got at the moment, You've got a lighter side and a darker side, a key side and a fill side. Well, with zebras, all we really want to worry about is the brighter side of our face, because that's the primary side that we're worried about when lighting, and also the last thing that we want is blown highlights. On the other hand, using exposure tools like false colour or waveforms allows you to see the brighter and shadow areas simultaneously. So this is one disadvantage of using zebras. Also for these examples I've used myself as the subject and I have definite pasty brick tones. So for darker skin tones you'll definitely want to adjust the zebras down a little bit. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, let's just get on with it and um, we'll go through some cameras now. Let's do it. So kicking off with Cine 1, and yes, it is lacking a little bit of contrast, but you know, I always kind of find that with the Cine profiles. In my experience, they all need a little bit of stretching out, but ignoring that for now because the important thing is how our skin tones are exposed. And this is with our zebras at 60% with 2% of range. And I'm very happy with this. There are no hot spots, and the key side of my face is exactly where I want it to be. Moving on to Cine 2, and I am less happy with this. By the way, I'm exposed exposing all of the Cine cameras with my skin tones at 60%. I suspect the difference here is that Cine 2 has a lower output of 100%, so the luma values are slightly different. So in this case, I would actually recommend stepping down to say, 57% and still with that plus two range and I think I would be happy with that on my skin tones. And then moving on to Cine 3, which any long-term viewers of this channel will know, this is my least favorite gamma. Look at all the extra contrast you get, see how my skin tones just look a little bit more hot, I would say. I really don't like baked in contrast. So for this one, I also would consider stepping down to say 58, 57%, but even then there's the danger of having a very dark and quite contrast the image. Cine 4 is an improvement for sure, but again, I think I would still prefer to step down to say 58%. Not that I'm unhappy with this, of course, it's a pretty lovely image. 60% is still a good basic guide for my pasty skin tones, so 58% I think is just some fine tweaking, that's all. Stepping over to S Cinetone now, and the first thing you notice is lots more contrast and a slightly different colour palette and a little more saturation, and that's because I'm using the S Cinetone gamut, as you probably should use. And I am a very big fan of this. It's just such a complete image. This just needs very little work. And remember, this is at 60% again. I'm not sure whether I would change this just because of how good this image looks just on screen without any work. So just to go through my findings for the Cine Gammas, Cine 1 I was very happy with at 60%, Cine 2 and Cine 3 I found a little bit hot so I would drop down to 57, Cine 4 only needed a slight tweak I would set it to 58, and S Cinetone, what a complete image at 60%, I'm really happy with it there. I know what you're thinking, this is just for my pasty skin, so what about darker skin tones? 
Well, it's so tricky to say because of the sheer range of different skin tones, but I would say from my lowest percentage all the way down to potentially down to 45% for these Cine Gammas, but really the best answer I can give you is to do some test clips for yourself. So my apologies, that really is the best I can offer as I only have myself to use as a subject. Just to touch on the subject of hotspots, because I anticipate some of you may say, Harv, what are you talking about? Hotspots? Well, you'll get areas on a subject's face which are particularly bright, and that's just because our faces have natural oils which are reflective. And you'll notice the way that I've set my zebras is more to find an average exposure percentage for the key side of my face. You can set your zebras to protect from these hot spots, but just bear in mind this can lead to a much darker exposure in general, because most people will have some form of natural oil, which inevitably leads to these hot spots. And this of course is when the makeup artists scream, that's what we're for. Anyway, moving on, and then onto the S-logs, and let's start with S-log 2. And I did a lot of research for this video, and lots of people out there were saying 58%. That's the golden number for S-log 2. And that's what I did for this one, and to be honest, I find it a little on the bright side. Even though there really aren't any kind of hot spots, I just find it's lacking just a touch of detail. So after looking at this clip, I went back and I tested it again. And if you're wondering what the difference is with the image here, there was a little bit of a light leak on a very sunny day coming through my window. Even though I've got blackout blinds, it made a big difference. It's okay though, the most important thing is my skin tone on that key side of my face. And this is at 55% and already I like it a lot more. I also just wanted to see what would happen if I dropped it down to 52% and I happen to like it even more. So 52%, that is the golden number for S-Log2 on my skin tones. Moving on to S-Log3 and for this one, the recommendation is 52% and bearing in mind that I've graded this one with the Phantom LUTs Neutral LUT, I think this is absolutely perfect. So 52% again for both of the S-Logs. I'm very happy with both of these looks and I'm very happy to make that recommendation. 52%, that was the one for my skin tone that worked the best by a long way. So to sum up my findings from the S-Log Gammas, no surprise, I found the best results were when I set my zebras to around 52% and admittedly this is not what I expected to happen, but that's why I make these videos and I'm very happy to be wrong. And just a couple of extra notes, I've always found with these Gammas you get less of the hot areas and that's just because they have more dynamic range. You also get a lot more flexibility when it comes to your exposure. You can underexpose, you can slightly overexpose just a little bit and bring it back. It's definitely harder to mess up your exposure for skin tones, unlike the Cine Gammas. As for non-pasty Brit skin tones, it's kind of as before. Take it from my darkest all the way down to 45%, but due to the extra dynamic range, I would even recommend adding more range maybe up to 4%, and then on to the HLG options. And I am still of the opinion that whilst I like the potential of HLG, unless you are shooting and delivering in HDR and have a real HDR monitor to grade on, I still think S-Log3 and S-Log2 are better options for most people out there at this time. But anyway, I'm not gonna leave you hanging, I did it anyway. How did I work out the zebra values for all of the HLG modes? Well, I used a grey card, and it turns out that HLG you should set to 18%, HLG1 to 19%, HLG2 to 20%, and you guessed it, HLG3 to 21%. So for each of these, I raised the zebra amount until it was covering the key side of my face, and it worked. I'm pretty happy with the exposure of my face here using standard HLG. And I'll say straight off the bat, I had the best results using standard HLG. I preferred them to all of the others. Looking at HLG1, that turned out pretty good too. It was a touch brighter using 60%, but still nothing wrong with this if you can ignore the slightly weird colours that you get with HLG. And just something to note with HLG, I find they always require some stretching out. And what I mean by stretching out is dragging the highlights up and dragging the shadows down just a little bit. Here's what it looks like with just the HDR tools plugin that you get in Final Cut that converts the HDR footage into something that's more Rec. 709-ish and without any other corrections. Anyway, now let's move on. HLG2 I found worked well with a slightly higher percentage of 65%. I'm using plus two range for all of these. 
and I got a decent exposure. One thing to note is all of the HLG gammas did very well with dealing with the hotspot areas. You can really tell that it's a high dynamic range gamma. It's just not for me and I know lots of people like it. I don't mean to knock your choice of gamma, you do you. And then HLG3 with that middle grey value creeping up, I actually found that around 68% was the best spot for my skin tones. On another note, I also found it kind of the weirdest when it came to contrast and colour. This is what it looks like with just the basic conversion. Pretty strange looking. Anyway, now let's sum up some thoughts about the HLGs. So standard HLG, I was very happy on my skin tones using 58%. HLG1, I originally set to 60, but I felt that it was a little bit bright. So again, I would go 58%. HLG2, you can definitely push it up to 65 and HLG3 to 68. Obviously scale these up or down for your subject's skin tones. But just some notes, the HLG gammas have lots of dynamic range, so they deal with highlights pretty well. However, for these gammas, I would almost just want to recommend using grey cards. I mentioned these before, HLG 18%, HLG 1 19%, etc. But of course, you can't just set your zebras to these low percentages because when looking at the back of your Sony camera, it's displaying corrected footage and it's mapping that middle grey point to a much higher value. And these are the values that I used. And if you want to read more about this, I've linked a really interesting but quite complex article in the description box below. You are welcome. Because I know that someone is going to ask this in the comment section below, what about using zebras to expose for 18% grey? in S-Log3. Well, the S-Log3 equivalent of 18% grey is 41%. So in theory, we can just set our zebras to 41% and just add maybe one or two percent of range just to give us a little bit of wiggle room. In theory, we can then use just a grey card in any situation and we'll get a really good standard exposure. This is not my favourite method, but it's, it's a method. Let's just see what happens, eh? So in the menus, I'm going to do exactly what I just described. I'm going to set my standard plus range to 41% with a 2% of range. And then when I put the grey card in front of the camera and adjust my exposure, you can see that range of zebras. It's a little bright here, and as I lower that exposure, you can see it creeping towards the middle grey. And you can see I've just about got it here, and then, oh, a little too far. So I'm going to back off and go with this and just see how this looks. So then when I step back around the camera, you can see that my skin looks a little dark. And I can tell this because with this lookup table, the lower your exposure, the more it accentuates your saturation. With a quick correction, I actually quite like the results, but I'm not a massive fan of this process in general. So there we go. It was worth a try. Anyway, now let's take everything we've learned in this video and grind it up and make a really delicious espresso of tips for you to take away. Firstly, I recommend setting up the two custom zebra banks and use one for lower limit and the other one for standard plus range. Lower limit is an ideal mode for setting up your zebras for protecting highlights. I like standard plus range for exposing skin tones. Of course you will need to adjust these percentages according to your subject's skin tone. You'll need to lower the zebra level for darker skin tones and raise it even higher if the subject has even more pale skin than mine if that's possible. Bear in mind there is a distinct disadvantage that zebras have that when looking at skin tones, it's tricky to judge the exposure of the fill side and the key side at the same time. Of course, waveforms and false color do a much better job of this. It's definitely possible to use a gray card and expose to 18% gray with S-Log3. Set your zebras to 41% as described earlier in this video. Lastly, you do you. These are just a few methods that work for me. They're not right or wrong. My hope is that you take something away of value from this video. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. Was it interesting and helpful? Did it help? How do you use zebras to expose your footage? If you have any pearls of wisdom regarding exposing your footage with zebras or waveforms or false colour, please don't hesitate to pop it in the comments section below. After all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has hand-selected this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.